Hi everyone, welcome back to my next video. Today we're going to meet Sharon and Casey and you are full timers in this beautiful uh, Winnebago Chalet. Yes, yes. Uh, full timers for almost two years. Two years now mm -hmm. and you've been RVers for much longer. Uh, since about mm -hmm. 2003. Good, and uh, full, full timers for about two years. And uh, so how did you end up being full timers? You must be retired. We are, well, uh, I came home from work one day and looked at Sharon and I said, I don't want to work anymore. <laughs> Do you think we could RV full time and see the country and enjoy ourselves and retire a little bit early? And Sharon says, yes, we can. <laughs> <laughs> and you were right, I assume. We were so right. So far, so good. It was, uh, it's a lot different than we thought it would be. Um, yeah, there's all sorts of issues when you go on the road full time. We went down from about a 2,500 square foot house. And so everything we own in the world today is right here. So, uh, but I think we've gotten used to it and we're doing mm -hmm. good. We're thriving now. At first it was mm -hmm. a little bit trying to figure it out. Now we're thriving. So it, it, you did get off to a little bit of a hard start, you would say. Well, just finding where everything was, Sharon and I would look at each other in the morning. Well, where is X? Well, I don't know. It's somewhere in here. So it's just things like that. Then you've Fine. got financial things and health insurance and just the litmus and uh, we came to RTR last year mm -hmm. and you helped us with lots of issues everything from alga donas to uh, some solar issues and so on and so forth well and I know we were really nervous at first about being able to find a place to camp did we know you know we thought we had to plan way ahead where are we going to be staying a month from now two months from now and being really nervous and then we figured out there's always a place to camp I mean we can always find some place and you know it just was kind of made us nervous not knowing where anything is you know as you're traveling around but now we've gotten a lot more comfortable with being able to go into an area and explore and we know we'll be able to find things so you would warn people that there is a certain initial confusion and difficulty but you can overcome it pretty easily oh yeah oh absolutely yeah. if you've been in the sticks and bricks for as long as we had it's just a world of change but once you get used to it and go with the flow you've got to stay loose and we plan in jello <laughs> <laughs> then it's so. great and mm -hmm. we follow the weather that's a lot of what we do now yeah. so you would call yourself snowbirds sure mm -hmm. and uh, so are you predominantly boondockers or are you staying in RV parks a lot of boondocking, but some RV parks, we like to mix it up both ways. Um, the, the social aspect of RV parks can be kind of nice, plus of course you've got all the services and stuff, so it's nice to go into those sometimes, be able to hook up, especially like if it gets really hot where we are or something and we can go into an RV park, plug in, have some air conditioning and stuff. Um, but generally we like to do a lot of boondocking and that's what we're set up for. For the pocketbook we love boondocking. Oh yeah. And it's quiet and there's lots of things there that we love. But we did find the escapees last year and so we joined and we love the escapee parks that are out there. There's a lot of social uh, togetherness, uh, just incredible we found. So that was a real big plus mm -hmm. to us was escapees. So we like the mix of both. And so uh, uh, with the escapees park, does that make it reasonably cheap to stay at an RV park? I'm not sure how that works. Yeah. yeah. Boondocking at one of the uh, parks averages five to seven dollars a night. Or you can go into full and hookups, which is about 17 to, to 25. 20. Well, 17 to 20 mostly. Mm -hmm. um, but so even, with the, even with the boondock, you normally have access to a dump station, to water, to trash, to bathrooms, laundry, laundry, laundry. showers. So even though you're in boondocking paying $5 a night, you still have access to all of those amenities. You just don't have electricity, basically. You have everything else. So it's really nice to go in, do laundry, take care of things like that. A lot of them even have Wi-Fi and that. And so. people are so darn nice. At, at, uh, was it mm -hmm. Thanksgiving? Christmas. 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 We had uh, uh, Christmas dinner with 200 of our newest and best friends. <laughs> In Yuma. So, In Yuma. Yeah. So. They're just incredibly nice people. Mm -hmm. So you would highly recommend the escapees Absolutely. and yeah. their parks. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And are you using them for your uh, domicile? Is that? No, no. Actually, we just use uh, Sharon's parents ah. as our domicile. Yeah. When you have when you have family <laughs> or friend, that's ideal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, we set it up with a scanner fax machine and it sends everything up to our uh, Dropbox account and that's how we get our mail on the road. Good. Uh, and so uh, financially you're doing okay? Are you retired? Are you drawing Social Security or just you no. have a retirement pension? No. 53, 51. Oh so my it's goodness, be a while. you're very young. Yeah. yeah. 
it's going to be a while but uh financially we're okay sharon's talked about working like at the grand canyon on the north rim and we've checked out some of the jobs at, at the quartzite show that you had talked about and mm -hmm. We're getting closer to doing that. I'm still enjoying my freedom. Yeah. <laughs> right. We, right now, we still want to travel since we're pretty new at this. We still, there's a lot of things we want to see and do. And so we're taking the time now to travel. And then I think in a few years, we'll probably kind of pick the areas we like the best and maybe look for jobs in those, in those areas and stuff. Well, Casey, I know a little bit of your background with in, in editing and video. I would think that you would have a, you could make money on the road online. This was the discussion last night <laughs> when Sharon said if I want any more toys I need to pay for them. <laughs> so well, maybe. So eventually probably we will do something. Um, I'm not sure what but we'll do something. Um, so to pry for the moment you're basically living on savings. Yes, yes. Yeah. Which is not, uh, you know, that's fairly common. Well, we ha we both worked in the banking sector, so we've been saving and investing all of our lives. So uh, we have enough. We're not rich by any stretch of the imagination, <laughs> but we found that living on the road in an RV, this is a glorified van, is incredibly cheap. Our lifestyle is so cheap and we use so little natural resources compared to what it used to be. House maintenance, uh, a hailstorm comes along, you've got a $2,000 deductible. You've got lawn maintenance, you've got all those things. Mm -hmm, that we don't have anymore. So we can live on a lot less, a lot less than we used to. So that's helped tremendously too. So you are kind of basically getting by on savings. You're just living so cheaply, mm -hmm. your savings will go a long, long ways. Right. Yes. Yeah. Right. We couldn't have done it without you. <laughs> Good. I'd love to hear that. Your website many years ago was one of the very first ones that we hit. And I said, Sharon, look at these guys. They're living in blah, 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 blah. Uh -huh. We could do that. Yeah. I mean, we've been kind of planning toward this. We'd been planning toward this for a number of years. And so saving and, and just planning and, and, you know, getting the rig and, and spending the time to modify it while we still had a sticks and bricks and, and had the space and the tools and everything to do those things. So we kind of, I mean... We just, it wasn't a spur of the moment type thing. Now the timing was a little bit, but um, but we already had the plan in mind. So. Our financial advisors told us to wait. <laughs> of course, yeah. Yeah, they will, they will never be satisfied that you have enough in the bank. Yeah, never. So what was your evolution of vehicles? What did you start out with, with and what have you tried in between? Oh yeah, uh, well we started out in a Coleman pop-up trailer. It wasn't a little one, it was a big one, had a full bathroom, all that kind of works. And uh, we did it when the kids were young. Absolutely loved it, except in Kansas, pop-up trailers don't work so good because of the wind. Right. So then we moved up to travel trailers. And then to pull the travel trailer a few years ago, five, six years ago, we built a van. And um, the van we turned into a, an excursion vehicle so that we could pull the trailer. We'd leave the trailer in camp, and then we could go up and do stuff in the van for four, five days at a time and come back. So it, we really built a Class B out of a Ford diesel van. But we loved the van so much. We said, we don't want to do a trailer anymore. We want a motorhome. So we tried to figure out how to do a Class B from there. And the problem is we've just got too much junk. We got rid of it. We, we sold all our stuff on Craigslist and eBay and everything and, and got rid of everything. And it still wouldn't fit in a van. It still wouldn't fit. So we said, OK, Class C. It's a van, only a little bigger. Will that work? And we wanted a smaller rig because we love getting into the places that are so cool. Um, you know, I could tell you that at New Fork Lake in Wyoming, we were the only ones on a hillside overlooking a 300 foot deep glacial lake. It was incredible and you could not have gotten in there in a bigger in rig. A big rig. Mm -hmm. National Forest the same way, they want little tiny rigs. National Parks. So what we make sure to do is never to go into anybody's cl uh, class A or fifth wheel. <laughs> then we get jealous. We get but, be. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> then we get jealous. We don't have slides or anything. And so when we go in there, we get real jealous. So we try not to do that. And then we're just still happy with what we have. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you're just kidding. I'm sure you go to a lot of them. Yeah. Uh, and so you have a, it's a Winnebago Chalet. Is that the model name? Yeah, Chalet, mm -hmm. it's actually, it was a rental here in Arizona. Oh, really? Chalet is the rental series. Oh. And so this was a rental that came up to where we lived in Kansas. And Somebody um, else bought it for, um, when the rental place was selling it. Somebody from Kansas bought it and then decided they didn't want like it. it. And, 
and it scored all of my points. I wanted a Chevrolet chassis. I wanted no slides. I wanted a certain length, and I wanted two beds. Uh, the key to our sleeping arrangement is Sharon sleeps up top, and I sleep in the back, and we've never been happier. <laughs> You know, sleeping, no matter how much you love the other person, That's sleeping right. with another person can be unpleasant. Um, Her temperature is different than mine. I mean, sure, mm -hmm. of course mm -hmm. it is. So, And oddly, sometimes it's 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 backwards. You think the woman will be hotter, but not. She's colder and you're hotter and, right. and ba vice versa, and you never know. Mm -hmm. And you move around and somebody can snore and it can as right. often be the woman as the man. And mm -hmm. Yeah, sleeping with another human being is, is complicated. But we sleep better now than ever. In fact, we don't really get up before 8 much anymore. <laughs> Got and it. all my working career is up at 545. Yeah. So. yeah. And so how long is it? Uh, it's officially 25 feet, but we added stuff to the front and stuff to the back. So whenever we tell the, the, the people at the Camp National uh, Parks and stuff, we say 28 feet. It's really a 25 foot vehicle. And uh, how has your experience been with the rental? Some people say, oh, don't ever buy a rental. How has yours been? Fantastic. Mm -hmm. I think the rental companies really keep their vehicles up. I mean, a lot of RV owners don't really know how to keep their RV up very well, from right. roof leaks to the way that they should change their oil more often, uh, just all those little nuances. I think that they don't really know. I see a lot of uh, uh, vehicles in worse shape by owners than the rental companies. Uh, very happy. And mm -hmm. how many miles were we bought put on by the rental company? Do you know? Uh, we had uh, about 62,000 on it. We bought it. It's a 2007. We were able to get it. That's the other thing. Class C's with no slides, nobody wants them. Right. So they sell very cheaply. We were able to get this for 22000 when it was uh, in 2005 years old or so. Yeah, yeah. it's five, seven years old. So we were able to get it cheap. We put some money into it. Uh, I modified almost every system in it to be to our taste. So total with everything, maintenance and everything changing out is about 30000 investment, which really isn't bad. No. No, not with that low miles. Mm -hmm. No, and even yeah. when I built my van, I'm, I'm uh, embarrassed to say how much I had in that van. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, building a van is nowhere near as easy as it looks. Yes, so if, you, if you want it really nice. It it's, takes it's a, a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And you're working like this the whole time. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you're living like that the whole time. <laughs> and you're a fairly tall guy, so. Yeah. Yeah, that's, we, yeah, that's why we just decided the van wasn't going to work for us to live in full time. It was great for weekends and short trips and that, but just for full time, it didn't have enough storage and it just didn't have enough room. Well, my standard advice to couples is always get a Class C because a few couples can live in vans, but they are few and far between. If we ever get a Sticks and Bricks, we've told each other we're getting a Class B. And I want it to be a four-wheel drive Class B. Right. So when we come back to Arizona, we can go to all these cool we places. We can go anywhere, yeah. Uh, and so uh, what kind of uh, fuel mileage do you get out of it? We've averaged, I have a uh, computer that's for the last two years kept track, over the mountains, under the mountains, everywhere, city, highway, we get 11. So right at 11. Well, that's very, very good. And so it's a Chevy, and which mm -hmm. engine do you have? It's about a 362 cubic inch. It's the actual Chevy small block. And um, Does that uh, make it the six liter? Yes, I believe it is, the 6 liter, yeah. Right, which is a great engine. It's hard for me to do the metric things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, it's been yeah. a fantastic engine. It has. It really, and the thing is, it drives so much better than my uh, Ford van did. It tended to wander, and the Chevy just just straight down the road. Right. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Chevy. When I won't, I won't buy any other van now but a Chevy. After, before 99, I think they were an even tie. Uh, I had a slight preference for Ford, but after 99, it's I'm a Chevy guy, huh. I'm only a Chevy. Um, one of the things, um, if any of your viewers are looking for RVs, one of the things that was really high on our list that I didn't mention was its cargo carrying capacity. Oh, yeah. A lot of the vehicles are maxed out and you can hardly put anything in it. One of the things that really sold us on this one was it had 3,500 pounds of CCC. So we could put as much junk as we wanted to in there and we're still 2,000 pounds underweight right now. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. A lot of uh, RVs leave the factory dry over gross. Yes. Right. It's amazing. Right. And, and also being a Winnebago, it's been my understanding all along that Winnebago found the sweet spot of a good price with a really good quality. I would say you're, you're dead on right. It's yeah. just like we don't have problems with cabinets falling off the walls right. because they screwed them into metal that they embedded in the sides. The things that have broken on this, Bob, have been the things that I put in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All the stock Winnebago <laughs> stuff has it's done so fine. well. 
<laughs> yeah, everything, we, we, we've been through enough to know that things break and you're going to be constantly oh, maintaining. Sure. But, uh, yeah. So, if, you know, the rep, many RVs have earned a reputation of just being real crap right off the showroom floor. But you would not say that was true of Winnebago. Your no. Your impression no. of Winnebago is no. very good. And we mm -hmm. love the fiberglass roof. It's just like when we mounted the solar panels. They're mounted with VHB tape. I put one screw in each side just as a, you know, a backup if the VHB ever took off. But that fiberglass roof is so nice to deal with. I mean, it's so easy to, to button up and so easy to add accessories to and easy to walk on, just everything. Love that. And uh, because you're mainly a boondocker, have you found this per particular model to be good for boondocking? Yes, once we yeah. made all the modifications to it, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, just stock from the factory, no. But uh, when you replace everything, the converter is a boondocking converter, the generators we've done work on there, the solar, the composting toilet, all that type of stuff, yeah. Mm -hmm. We can go for two weeks at a time, no problem whatsoever. I mean, we, we usually get into an area, park, and then hike. Since we don't have a vehicle that we tow, right. it's mostly hiking. So, and, uh, but two weeks is pretty easy. Pretty mm -hmm. easy, good. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, why don't we take a look around? Do you mind if you will be willing to show us your home and yeah, share it with us? Yeah. Thank you. Love to. Let's go ahead and do that then. Mm -hmm.